excellent distinguished colleagues. This is not the first time that I speak in the halls of this August chamber about this issue that I wish to bring to everyone's attention once again. Today, on Women's Month, I rise as a woman and as a mother to speak on behalf of not only my own children, but on behalf of all Filipino children. There is no doubt that most of us here today are affected by what we see in media, in the news, but the everyday violence that is hidden from the headlines is a crime that turns homes into places of indescribable suffering that kills the soul. What does this suffering look like? A two-year-old toddler was offered by her own mother to be sexually abused in live stream video for paying customers overseas last September 14, 2017, somewhere in the Visayas. For all my colleagues and fellow parents, especially the women in this August body, can you even imagine your own children enduring this ordeal in your own hands? I dare say it is unimaginable, and the very thought makes even the strongest stomachs turn. But for a two-year-old toddler and another 12-year-old girl, whom we shall call Cassie, it is not merely a figment of imagination. This was an everyday reality. Allow me to tell you the story of Cassie. She grew up in an indigenous community in the South, eking out a hand-to-mouth existence. With no education, she felt she had no future. When a family friend, let's call him Jerry, lured her parents with promises of free schooling and a good job in Manila for Cassie, they readily agreed. That was the beginning of Cassie's living nightmare. For five years, Jerry adopted Cassie only to enslave her. Jerry raped 12-year-old Cassie in front of a web camera. He raped her for profit so foreigners all over the world can live out their sickest, darkest fantasies through live streaming. Later on, Jerry arranged for foreign customers to rape Cassie in the flesh. Worse, her family in the indigenous community in the province, not knowing the truth of Cassie's brutal ordeal, sent her sister to Manila, where she joined Cassie and three other children living in the house. The youngest was only six years old. When Cassie was living out the horror of this live-streamed abuse, she was thinking, I want to die. I want to die because of this pain, but I can't. I want to stop my breath, but it's always, oh, I'm still breathing. Why can't I die? Mr. President, no child should ever have to wish for death. But Cassie's story did not end in death. Cassie and the other children were rescued by the PNP, DSWD, and the International Justice Mission, or IJM, a nonprofit organization that partners with our Philippine law enforcement agencies in rescuing victims, restoring them, securing justice for these sexually exploited children. On May 26, 2017, Cassie's abuser, the person you now see on screen, was convicted of life imprisonment under the very law that I sponsored here in 2012, the expanded anti-trafficking in persons law. Today, Cassie is alive. She is now safe in a shelter. Why Cassie wanted to die before, she now wants to live so she can bring hope and comfort to other child's victims. Mr. President, Cassie is just one of thousands of Filipino children who are being abused and traumatized within the confines of their very homes, even by their own family. Instead of safety and love, the pain and the horror of online sexual exploitation is their everyday reality. Simply put, online sexual exploitation of children, or OSEC, is a heinous act of live streaming or broadcasting the sexual abuse 
and sexual exploitation of children via the internet through a webcam or any other device for the satisfaction of another, usually a pedophile from abroad who directs and purchases the live stream online sexual abuse of children. Children who come from developing countries like the Philippines, where internet connection is readily accessible and its people speak English well. According to IJM supported PNP and NBI operations, more than 273 victims have been rescued in 77 operations, with over 87% of those rescued victims under the age of 18. The average age of the rescued victim is 12 years old, just like Cassie. And victims below 12 years of age make up more than half or 52% of all victims rescued in OSEC. The youngest that IJM has ever rescued was a newborn baby, only two months old. It's unthinkable how a two month old baby can be used for sexual online exploitation. <laughs> this is not a gender specific crime either. 16% of the survivors are boys. Yeah. But perhaps the most alarming fact is that 81% of IJM supported cases involve parents and relatives who exploit their own children, which explains why 59% of the cases involves sibling groups. Last February, in three separate rescue operations around the Philippines, IJM, together with the law enforcement Law enforcers rescued 10 children, the oldest, a girl 17 years of age, and the youngest, a three-year-old boy, who was being sexually abused by his own mother. Last week, joint elements of the PNP Women and Children Protection Center and the NBI Anti-Human Trafficking Division, DSWD, and the Interagency Council Against Trafficking, or IACAP, a byproduct of our law, and the IJM, in coordination with foreign law enforcement agencies, rescued five children, the youngest, a two-year-old girl, from being sexually exploited by a neighbor. While it is unthinkable enough to think that Filipinos do this to their own children, it does not make it any less unthinkable when foreigners profit from the online rape of our nation's children. Last year, David Timothy Dickin, an American child webcam cyber sex den operator living in Pampanga, was caught streaming illicit sex abuse content through a network that disguised his identity and location. The NBI made the largest seizure of technological evidence of its kind to date. They confiscated sex toys, children's underwear, bondage cuffs, drug paraphernalia, and 30 hard drives containing thousands of illicit photos and over 4,000 contact numbers. They also rescued two girls, nine and 11, who were placed in the care of the DSWD. The other victims revealed that they can refuse to feed them if they don't perform during the live stream sex shows. And like Cassie, the girl said they wanted to die. Mr. President, we have the power to ensure that these cases shall not end in the slow death of traumatic abuse. Studies have shown that when violent offenders are held accountable for their crimes through effective and sustained law enforcement, this will dramatically reduce the abuse of vulnerable victims. You see, trafficking of children for sexual exploitation, whether done online or on the street or in bars or in the homes, is a business, an economic activity, if you will, even if it is against the law. However, if criminals know that laws are routinely enforced and that they will go to jail or even die, they will get out of the business of selling children because it will not be worth it anymore. Yes, they should die. My colleagues in the Senate, this is not just an observation either, but this was proven by the prevalence of studies conducted in Metro Cebu, in Metro Manila, in Angeles City, where IGM documented a decrease of 79% in 2010 in Cebu. 
75% decrease in Metro Manila, 86% decrease in Angeles, both in 2016, of the availability of minors being sold for sex in bars and on the streets after law enforcement authorities relentlessly enforced anti-trafficking laws in those cities. Mr. President, we have enough laws. Online sexual exploitation of children is illegal under the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, which was first enacted in 2001, and the expanded Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act in 2012. I'm happy to note this representation authored and sponsored both laws with the support of most of our colleagues here who were senators at the time. The Cybercrime Prevention Act, the Special Protection of Children Against Abuse, Exploitation and Discrimination Act, Anti-Child Pornography la Law. The question therefore is not if we have enough laws, but are we actually enforcing these laws? We already have national anti-trafficking units in place that are mandated to specifically combat trafficking and OSEC, namely the PNP Women and Children Protection Center, NBI Anti-Human Trafficking Division, we have the Interagency Council or IACA that coordinates all the efforts to enforce our trafficking laws. Allow me to share at this point that the Philippines is taking the lead in combating trafficking in Southeast Asia, being the only Southeast Asian country to achieve Tier 1 ranking in the Trafficking in Persons Report of the U.S. Department of State. But we must not and cannot allow this to lull us into complacency. We must all rise to the challenge of ensuring that this deplorable crime will be totally eradicated. As lawmakers, with our power of the purse, we can ensure that our laws are enforced by making sure that our agencies mandated to enforce these laws have resources to do their jobs, which is why in the national budget of 2018, we have ensured that the PNP Women and Children's Protection Center gets an increase in its budget for additional training and purchase of equipment, which will lead to more children being rescued, more criminals being arrested, and stopping this horrific crime in its track. However, being a transnational crime, ending OSEC, requires a concerted effort from all nations. While the Philippines can do all it can to address this, a holistic solution requires that developed countries from which the demand for this type of exploitation usually originates must also do their part. This calls for amending the lenient sentences that their laws meet upon those who prey on Filipino children. In Queensland, Australia, for example, a man was only fined 500 Australian dollars and placed on a three-year good behavior bond after being convicting, convicted of receiving explicit images of two girls from a Filipino mother, the youngest of whom was age 10. Imagine the absurdity. The Filipino mother gets life imprisonment, but the Australian demented pedophile directing the abuse walks free. How then can we hope to stop our children from being sexually exploited online when the foreign customers get merely a slap on the wrist. Today, I am issuing a call and a challenge to our fellow legislators from other countries, especially where there is a proliferation of demented pedophiles, to raise the penalties, to lower the demand, and reflect the true nature of the crime in your respective countries, truly. This, one of the, this is one of the worst forms of violence against women and children with incalculable harm that traumatizes children even to the point of death. To end, Mr. President, the fight against ending online sexual exploitation of children should not end with us. While we are sending a strong message to the rest of the world, that we refuse to allow our children to be exploited for anyone's gain. The rest of the world must also stand with us. No child, no child victim should ever have to wish for death at the hands of Filipinos or foreigners alike. Together, we must give children a chance to wake up from the nightmare of abuse. 
and to live free. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Can you just make a uh, short manifestation? And uh, this is in support, and uh, this representation would like to associate himself to the uh, statements made by the Honorable Senator, Senator uh, Lauren uh, Legarda. Mr. President, the month of March is the National uh, Women's Month. In celebration of this month, the Philippine Commission on Women chose the theme, We Make Change Work for Women. I believe that we can uh, truly make change work for women, Mr. President, by directly working with them, listening to their needs, and involving them every step of the way. Uh, Mr. President, this afternoon, I'd like to uh, uh, inform the body that the com your Committee on Labor heard uh, three bills, <coughs> namely Senate Bill number. Uh, 1203 by Senator Tito Soto, our majority floor leader, which seeks to provide a more friendly working environment for women by expanding maternity leave benefits, securing the rights of pregnant employees, protecting the rights of women in manufacturing firms, and providing fle flexible work policies for working mothers. Uh, another, Mr. President, is Senate Bill Number 892, authored by Senator J.B. Ejercito, which aims to amend certain provisions of the Labor Code and expand the prohibited, prohibited acts of discrimination against women, especially with respect to the terms and conditions of employment on account of her sex. And lastly, Mr. President, this afternoon, we also tackle Senate Bill Number 412, authored by Senator Lauren Legarda, which seeks to amend Republic Act 7877 or the sexual harassment law by expanding the coverage of the definition of the crime of sexual harassment to include unwanted text messages, email or other similar means. Alam niyo po Ginoong Pangulo, mahigit dalawang, dalawang dekada na mula nang maging batas ang RA 7877. Marami na pong nagbago. Uh, may bagong uh, ang maraming pinagbago lalo na sa industriya ng teknolohiya may 60 million na internet subscribers na po sa Pilipinas 40 million na po ang active sa social media at tatlo sa bawat sampung Pilipino ay meron na pong smartphone of course these new forms of communication can be used to convey messages that are vulgar, sexist, as well as push for, demand, or request for sexual favors so now Mr. President The, the work or training related sexual harassment does not only occur in a face-to-face -face, uh, confrontation between two people but also over the internet using social networks or instant messaging. There is a need to expand the definition of the crime of sexual harassment based on compliance monitoring by the Department of Labor and Employment on the implementation of RA 7877 or from the experience of stakeholders on their anti-sexual harassment programs. So President, according to studies, when women are empowered, all of society benefits. So let us expand the horizon of opportunities and options for women workers put an end to work and training related violence and harassment and promote pay equity and labor rights at work. We, all of us, tayo pong lahat, can make change work for women. Maraming salamat po, Ginoong Pangulo. Mr. President, uh, I move that we refer the privilege speech of Senator Legarda.